Good morning. The holidays are over and it's a brand new week for a number of people. You are just starting your week. Welcome to one more new start. And of course, we hope to bring that bit of magic into your morning. Now, we consider ourselves blessed to have started a brand new day with you, but it's time to get to work. The week started already. Good morning. Welcome. This is the choiciest breakfast show ever, and it feels amazing to be right there on your screen. And now, people call Tuesday the most productive day of the week, and yeah. we are specifically set up to give you a lift and ensure that you get into the right frame of mind for the rest of the week. As we have something tailored for you, you know, Took Up Nigeria, yeah. we cater to all the caters of family, parenting, there's health, mm -hmm. uh, there's art, mm -hmm. uh, there's relationships, everything that you need for a family, we got it all here. So all we can do right now is say thank you for joining us for another run. However, before we proceed, Madam MM is looking all regal no, in we are the not, kitchen. We are not, we are not She's looking to very regal and royal in the kitchen today. How are you doing, we're darling? We're not, we're, not, we're not doing anything with MM this morning. <laughs> but hey, come on, we'll talk to MM, of course, uh, as we get here to sit down and talk, my name is Mike Mesikeno. And I'm Titi Laya Owusa. You can, of course, watch the show on GoTV Channel 16 and UHF Channel 49. Yeah. Follow yeah. us on socials when you can at TVC Connect. YouTube is available. You can watch uh, clips and segments of the show. And uh, there are times when we have the full show yeah. available on YouTube. It's at TVC Entertainment. Yes, yeah, so our hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC is always buzzing, so make sure you take note of it. Let's kick things off with health today. And we're going to be discussing how to take care of our eyewear today. The do's and don'ts. We have Dr. Sharon joining us today. She's a well-grounded and experienced optometrist. She has nearly two decades of experience with clinical eye care. And uh, there is a performance, but just before that, uh, we will be having parenting. And of course, uh, you know how we do it on parenting here. Yeah? We ensure that we make it all rounded and uh, give your kids something or give you something that you uh, can uh, learn when it comes to raising your kids. That's what we do on the show. And of course, today won't be any different. Then we'll be having a soul-lifting performance. Joan Peters is a music minister and evangelist, and this one is going to be a great one. God has done me well. She'll be performing that later on. Yeah. Look, this look really looks beautiful. It does. Under the right cameras, because a number of people who watched it live, of course, you know that when you have to watch live, there's a lot that mm. happens, quality drops and all of that. Mm. It had all these red hue and really looked awful mm. but then when i saw the original videos and all of that it was a thing of beauty mm. you know from the whole setup and all of that and people really turned up after the rain that day you know in the morning you need or if you yeah, if you yeah, passed yeah. or jota yeah, yeah, yeah. so I, I actually was out i left home by 10 a.m and i was out in the midst of the rain wow dear lord that i love driving in the rain mm. i love i'm a <laughs> pleasure far but oh more the blue jump out. Wow. I, like, really, I was, at one point, I was like, oh, what's happening here? Mm. So I was really, it wasn't, it, the, 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 we really need to work on our drainage. Yeah. There's a lot of dirt. I don't know whether, I don't know if it's there, but Oworo, from Oworo, yeah. Bagada Express, Bagada Expressway was just something else. That You know that court where you're going to mm -hmm. Bagada yeah. Expressway? The word, it was almost up to the, so you know, it's yeah. something that year after year after year, season after season, we, we experience this similar response to when the roads seem to be blocked or there seems to be flooding as soon as raining season starts. Mm. It does feel like by now we should have put something in place to anticipate these things. And well, I don't know. When you the, say putting something in place, I'm talking I feel about, that um, we also have our own responsibility mm. with properly... Um, trashing our dirts yeah there's people and we don't have that culture here right and it comes from a place of education right when you know what to do with your dirt you properly dispose them yeah but a lot of that a lot of that is not happening when and when that does not happen you'd expect so, this um, on the drainage yes, it does you would have that effect on it the does drainage. have its place really but then um I, I think i saw something somewhere i'm not very sure if it's exactly what he said but someone was saying something about how if the government should go by its policies or by mm. its regulations, a lot of houses that are in Ajah area mm. would not be there. They'll be demolished. Mm. 
Mm. We have, you've built, a lot of houses have been built over places where mm. canals, drainage, drainage systems yeah. and all that should yeah. be yeah. passing. Yeah. So as much as refuse is a problem, yeah. it mm -hmm. is, but not as, so for those major routes, yeah. For those major, mm. major routes, mm. like right, it's not because the water is carrying the refuse. Mm. So yes, it does have in your homes, your small gutters, mm -hmm. those places, and That's we what see I'm where it's yeah. Yes, but then in those bigger ones, when you have, especially when on the highway, yeah. this is about the biggest. I mean, I mean, I, I saw. I was telling someone about how when they were building um, their papa, the uh, Osh, um, uh, papa expressway, you know, mm. that Bagada papa. It was massive. They had two beds of. You know, concrete. concrete. Yes. There were, there was, you know, yep. the, the iron, the concrete, and the you know, channels everything. were so structured. Like, yes. Did they plant drainage? Why are they doing this road? Mm. Of course. Um, but from the rain, I oh, don't think it was that planned that well. Right. So no. So that's the thing. It's all a. It's like a domino effect. Mm. Different uh, channels, channels coming from different yeah. places. Yeah. It's there's still a lot more research that needs to be done. On yes, that quite situation. a lot. Exactly. Mm. Before lot. the true rains begin. Quite a lot. Let's sort out our own environment. Exactly, especially. exactly. Hello and good morning. Welcome. You're watching Wake Up Nigeria and it's time for a news update. My name is Titilaya Oyiso. We begin from the nation's capital where Nigeria's president-elect Bola Tinubu returned to the country after over four weeks in Europe. His aircraft touched down at the Namdi Azikiwe Airport, Abuja, around 4.30 p.m. yesterday. The president-elect, who traveled out of the country since March 21st, returned to give direction ahead of May 29th, or inauguration. The former Lagos governor returned with his wife, Senator Oluremi Tinubu, and they were received by the vice president-elect, Kashim Shitima, Speaker, House of Representatives, Femi Gbaja Biamila, and many other high-ranking party chieftains. The trip, according to the office of the president-elect, was to enable him rest and plan for the transition programmed ahead of his inauguration as the 16th president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Earlier, before the arrival of the president-elect, our correspondent spoke to some APC members on what Nigerians should expect after May 29th inauguration. Winning is another thing, a step forward, 10 times, 100 times that this is a person we want in this country who can change so many things in this country. The man who is going to rebuild our hope, and our hope is on him. We are hoping that by the time he's built on 29th of May, things, a lot of the things are going to change. Youth will be happy, the old will be happy, and every Nigeria will be happy. This is the man we'll be working for. That's why we are here, to give you a welcome support, to say this is the man we wanted in this country. He's the man we've been working for, and that's why we are here. And for the party, it's um, a new dawn. It's a new dawn for the party. It's a new dawn for Nigeria. And also, if you remember, this is the era for renewed hope. Now, he's a man, a president who has an action plan, a president who is actually read, a president-elect who will be sworn in, inshallah, on the 29th of May 2023 as the, as the executive president, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And what we're saying is we have a man who's been prepared for over 30 years, we have a man who has a plan to take action, and we have a man who is ready to actually hit the ground running from day one. And we're quite glad. You can see the number of people here today. This is just probably a very small um, number of people compared to those who are waiting for him at the Unity Fountain, and also all over Nigeria. Nigerians, and let's also remember that Nigerians actually gave him that mandate freely in a credible and also an election that was actually free. And Nigerians just can't wait to have him as a president, being sworn in as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Meanwhile, the president-elect, Bola Tinubu, has charged supporters who thronged his Asokoro residence to welcome him after his return to be calm and peaceful. Ashwaju Tinubu urged them to go back home to enable him rest as he has a long day beginning tomorrow, or rather today. Uh, as present, he at his Abuja residence was the former governor of Borno State, Ali Modu Sharif, who spoke about the expectations of Nigerians for the incoming administration. Serving senators and some party chieftains were also present to welcome the president-elect. Don't isolate one date. The one date on the calendar doesn't mean anything. It's just an event. 
Yes, but, I already talking about your administration and what it will look like. Can you give us a glimpse into what you have in plan? I can't. I've not consulted people yet. And an administration, you said, is not run alone. You don't govern alone. You govern with people. You consult. Assemble. And then hit the ground running. And it's the same country, right? Isn't it? Uh, so, thank you very much. The middle yeah, okay. So, what is important is that when you have a head that is correct, everybody will fall in line. If you don't get the right head, it will collapse. Yeah, so, we're all ready to fall in line. Yes. yes. I agree. The expectation is high. Very high. And, uh, they want you to replicate what you did in Lagos. The um, whole of Nigeria, that's what they want. I believe we can. Yes. yes. We can win the world without losing the battle. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Nigeria is for all of us. Yes, yes, yes. Now we have to build, build it, yes, construct it, reform it. Reconstruct it. <laughs> A growing list of countries have evacuated diplomats and citizens from Sudan's capital as fighting continues into a second week. Reports revealed that a small British military team has landed in Sudan to assess potential evacuation options. The UK evacuated diplomats and their families yesterday, but an estimated 4,000 UK citizens remain in the country. UK Minister Andrew Mitchell says officials are looking at every possibility to get British nationals out. He also urged UK citizens in Sudan to stay indoors and warned if they leave their homes to do so at their own risk. One businessman described a nightmare for those left behind. But the foreign secretary says help will remain severely limited without a ceasefire. And that's all we have time for when it comes to the news for this hour on Wake Up Nigeria. Let's take a quick break and be back with more. All righty then. Quite a cacophony here, mm -hmm. ladies. Mm -hmm. Really no. Cacophony. <laughs> really no. Mm -hmm. English master. With all our deep voices. Well, I'm, I'm doing I'm, very well. You're not going to be a lecturer. Well. <laughs> <laughs> the size of the voices. Okay, no, not the size of the voices. These ladies. What? Uh, I shouldn't spend too much time with you. Okay, so, <laughs> so I feel this like is... the director wanted to put us in trouble, but it's fine. Okay, it's yeah. gone because so we're discussing this is, something. This is one that really, that really, really um, hit you. Know, you. Yes, I. Okay. I, it's very, very personal for me because, um, you know, I feel like ladies are not protected enough. Hmm. You know, women are not. Women. You know, the gender, the female gender is not protected. Coming from and, a man. Hmm. You know, um, we we saw Empress Njama over the past few months from last year. Mm -hmm. You know, she had issues with her ex, as it were, ex-fiancé. Mm -hmm. Never married the guy and all that. And then the Fiance. guy went up revenge, revenge, yeah, yeah. revenge, yeah. yeah. I, I, I do think he's even Nigerian. So, well, I don't know so much about him, but then what really got me angry was after he released those videos and pictures of her, it was a smirk on his face when he was talking about it. Mm -hmm. it, I, it, it I, I feel like if, if, if they hold this man, ah, if I, like he goes, oh, you don't know what is coming. Like that. It's one very... <laughs> Let me know his so his accent. That Mike has that. sisters. So it, 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 it was it women was like, in his family. As, yeah. and, and how does why should a lady, let's say in your private moments, mm. I mean, will you share pictures in your birthday suit, and then you feel that because you are not in speaking terms with the person, or you guys have broken up, and then you feel it's some sort of punishment. Mm. Any man that does that, you are less than a man. Mm. That's that's it's, well said. It's, on your person, I mean, everybody, every, I, in fact, now it's no longer trendy. You do it and you're an idiot. Mm. Mm. Mike, I like this Michael. Honestly, it's, this, this version of Michael. It's, I just it want to just keep talking. Oh, focus on the topic. <laughs> I just knew it. We're waiting for money. So there are, there are some decisions um, that are so delicate. I'm, 
You said uh, ex fiance, right? Yeah, they no, didn't actually not marry. boyfriend, Sefo. But, but they didn't actually marry. Yeah. And I'm just, I, I don't know whether it's a good thing to be glad that she didn't actually marry. Oh, yeah. oh, because oh, if, yeah. for instance, they had actually got married, imagine the kind of mental space she would probably be in mm. at that point. Um, and um, thankfully, they are separated. She has a chance to rebuild and recalibrate and rethink some things. Mm. My issue now is the world's judgment of women that made such decisions. And yeah, you made a mistake, sent some videos or shared some videos with a significant other that you were supposed to marry. Mm -hmm. um, and that mistake is out there for the world to see. Mm. She, in my opinion, might probably need to speak to someone on this, get counsel, you know, to be able to, because it's, it's very intrusive. This is the whole world seeing you in a particular state, in a particular place. I'm just really hopeful and praying for her that she's able to rebuild from a place of positivity. See what Savage sang? Now who mm. never? Oh. Yeah. And everybody went, ah, she's proud of what she did. Oh, she, no. but the reality she's is this, the bashing a woman gets yeah. for having the same pleasure a man is having, mm. simply because it goes out in public is mm. unfortunate. And, and really unfair. Fair. And is unfair. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's insane when, you know, maybe you sold your phone and you and your husband or your boyfriend or your mm. fiance's private moments are all over the place. But then it's terrible when it is that person who used to be the love of your life mm. who then messed you up. It, it's terrible. It's something that can cause PTSD because mm. when you're in other relationships, yeah. you're so wary, you're so scared, you're told not to do this, but yet then you're with somebody, you're thinking, oh, this person is mature mm. enough to handle this. Mm. And the person proves not to be able to. Yeah. Mm. It's sad. Um, ah. This actually brings to mind our sense of humanity, first off, because first, we're human beings. And being a human being means that there are certain things that are required of you as a person to the next person, right? Which is, first off, love, yeah. compassion, yeah. kindness. Yeah. You're in a relationship with someone. So first off, right, their relationship was an abusive one. Obviously. So she was, she, she attested to being scammed, uh -huh. beaten, uh -huh. and harassed several wow. times. And so you this know, was like she the left, I see Exactly. Mm -hmm. Before she left the relationship, right? So first off, you're, it's been established that this guy is an abuser. Mm -hmm. He is not a good person because a good person would not do all of these things that I have listed, right? But then again, I think this is a lesson for everyone, especially you youngins out there that are yeah. still single or are in a relationship. Yes. Be careful with whom you share your nudes with. Mm. Don't even take notes. I don't even think they should even be I recorded even, in the yes, first place. Yes, I think you should not. Just better be safe than sorry. Yes. To be honest, God forgive me, and I, I know my husband probably watches the clips. Hey, if I see my husband on the bed while I'm changing, I, I enter the wardrobe to go and mess up. <laughs> it's actually... I can't stop him from trying to record me because he's my I can't actually stop him. Mm. I can make a request. But what if he actually maybe took a picture? Yes. So, look, I wouldn't just for know. The fun of it. You I wouldn't know. know. Yeah, see, I'm I'm paranoid like that. There's what? no problem with pictures or videos. Uh, wow. 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 Yeah, you're gonna go wow. there. Wow. There speak is, your truth, yeah. mister. Speak Please. it. No. Speak your truth. Mike, I need to just <laughs> don't do it. It's just true. No, 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 but really, let's be. Let's be. You see, the issue. And then it's on the cloud. The issue. Oh, if you decide to yeah. go, go for politics it's one day, it's going to they the bring and come. Wow. It's almost like, see, Can't everybody. Like did. No. You definitely have one or two conversations <laughs> that. Now. You don't want in public space. Yeah. In fact, they, but that's why they are private. Oh, well, true. You understand? So there is nothing wrong with having something private. I, it is meant you did it for maybe yourself. Yeah. I mean, what if I was walking around to see how I look? Or maybe she yeah. went for a cosmetic procedure. She wants to see how she looks. Oh, she mm. traveled. It's a private you guys are... Do you understand? It's a private relationship. The, the idea, wow. the crime there is My sharing guy. it or yeah. putting it online. Okay. You know, and you so, need to, yeah, and, they need, people think, need to know that that's yes. a crime. I think people are it's shifting now. Crime. It is a crime. People the world know. is shifting in such a way that people now vilify those who share it. Yeah. Because remember when it came out, uh, so there was a statement from a Liberian police chief or spokesperson. Mm. Said so this guy had, he, he has um, you a know, record. He does this regularly. And then there were like over 20 ladies that had reported. Wow. What? And wow. she was not about Liberia. it. 
Wow. Maybe that's probably why she left him. You understand? There were over 20 oh, ladies. Gosh. And then at times we would even steal from them and all of that. Uh -uh. So that was even, you know, in... in, in his Waterloo. You know. <laughs> so we, the, we, we love, we want justice to take his cause. And for, he still had that silly smirk on his face. The, I know but, that smirk is really bad. But we had already seen that our African justice system had already started taking root, even in the play. Because they had already started, he has already started giving, you know, when they tell you to... Uh, yeah, but then, guys, mm. remember back in the day when our parents used to thoroughly investigate yes. who were going to marry. settle down with yes. them, who yes. were going to marry? That culture like, they would go back. as back as where your, your potential spouse home is, village, back in the yes. village. They would go and 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 go Gone this way, and this one will share their news. Gone this way, gone this way, gone this way. By the time they get here, and their parents are finding their husband, the person with the news say, You cannot marry that guy, else I'll share your news. See, at the end of the day, let's be very careful what we do. Yeah. That's the most important. Let's yeah. be very careful. Yeah. So I want to say, I want to say, it's a crime to share Please. private Please. and intimate moments. Yeah. Uh, revenge porn is a mm. crime. Yeah. Pornography generally is. Yeah. Yes, that's the term for it. Revenge, revenge porn. Actually. You'll be caught. Mm. It's, hard. it's not. It's not hard it's now. Not they, hard will, they will track you. That, yeah. they, as you share it, you are bring yourself out. They will catch you, mm. and they will deal with you. Mm -hmm. Don't and if you're a female and there's someone who is blackmailing you with it, you report it. Let's let's it. Let's it go. Report. Report. They will catch him. They will report. Report. Don't let anybody blackmail That's you. That's old school. Nothing new under the sun. You know how many people don't, people don't want to record their private mm. movements? It's yeah. not them. People will talk, but they will get over it's it. It's for their pleasure. Yeah. All right, but hey, come on. Hi. That's it. You, right, can, you can share your thoughts, but generally we're saying it's wrong and we're happy that the, uh, you know, was the criminal has been caught. Yeah. We'll take a time out now. Stay with us. We'll be back in a bit. It's health. Tuesday and we are here to talk about how to take care of our eyewear. The do's and don'ts. Our guest today is Dr. Ekene Sharon and no more. She's a well-grounded and experienced optometrist with nearly two decades of expertise in clinical eye care. It is great to have you, Dr. Kenna. You're welcome. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. All right, so when we say eyewear, what exactly do we mean by eyewear? Well, Eyewear is everything you use to aid your eye to see better. Mm. So it could come in different forms. Mm. You could have regular optical lenses. You could have contact lenses. You could have uh, sports gear that you use for high impact sports for those who have need for glasses and they play high impact sports. Okay. Squash, soccer, basketball. Oh, yeah. So you have high impact sports. So basically, eyewear is anything you use to help you see well mm. and protect your eyes because you have a need for that eye for that eyewear or okay so um now the most common one is of course your optical glasses the ones with the rims and all of that and then we've seen people start using contact lenses medicated contact lenses but also there are because I, I i had a friend who had a very terrible experience with a cosmetic contact, contact lens lenses. in oh, fact yeah. this uh this guy was blind like he went blind out. for what Almost a month plus. Oh, he's lucky to have regained the sight. I, I like I was, and then he goes like, "Okay, I know it will come." And I was like, you know, so I've always had this fear for contacts. We'll get to contacts, but let's start with your normal rimmed optical lenses. How does one take care of them? Okay, normally when people go for glasses, they take their time to pick something. You know, you invest money, you invest time, find the right frame, find the one that fits your face. It's important you get something that works and then care for it. And caring for it is very easy if we can just take our time to do it. First, wash your glasses with water. Yes. You see, most times you see people, their glasses, they look, you see smudges, fingerprints. I wonder how they see with it. They don't take time to. If you can't sit down to find a proper microfiber cloth to clean your glass, just water, run, run your glasses under water. Under water. Wash it properly and then okay. let it air dry. Okay, okay. A few minutes. It air dries and then you can wear it back. When it's clean, you see better. Another way, of course, we have lens screening sprays that you yes. get from your doctor. Mm. Be mindful to use the right one. Some persons, they get from the doctor for a while, it exhausts, and then they begin to use whatever they find. They find, yeah. When you use anything that has alcohol, ammonia, it's going to end up destroying the lenses. And you've put in some money into those lenses, so you should care for it. Then the kind of cloth you use to clean your glasses. Uh, I was going to there. Tip of our shirts. Mm, absolutely a lot. <laughs> yeah. So many people do that. The irony of it is that when you do that, our fabrics are very abrasive. So when you use it, you're going to scratch those lenses. And that's you, of course. 
rendering what you've gotten. You know, and then the, the way you hold it as well. Some people just pick up and then they're trying to be uh, trendy. They do the one hand wear, one hand remove. And then you end up having glasses that is tilted to one corner. Okay. Or you, your glasses are good today and next two days, you're noticing that ah, my glasses is not feeling so well. Because you've been tilting it from one end to the other. So it's always best you want to wear glasses, pick up with both hands, wait. wait. If you can't get with both hands, the middle ridge around here, pick mm. from there and then wear with both hands. Never one-handed. Never one-handed. Never one-handed. Right, so there, there's the cloth that I see most times that comes with the, there's a cloth yeah, in the, the case. Yeah, the microfiber. That's a microfiber. That is made for your lenses, specifically made. for it. Do you, that, is, is that cloth meant to be washed? Yes, you can wash it. So Why you wash not? it regularly, You right? wash it to get off the dust, to get off the dirt, okay. to get off the oils, because our body, we secrete oils, when we touch these things, they get to our glasses. Good. Wash it off. Make sure you dry it properly and reuse it. How often should you wash it? That's another question. As much as once a week. Okay. Keep it clean. It's like every okay. other thing. Every keep other it thing. Clean. Just make sure it's Just clean whenever it clean. That's there is an issue. And then you can use it to clean your glasses and your glasses will last you longer. All right, now let's move to the one that really scares me. Contact. Contact lenses. You know, that one is... <sighs> Uh, where, where do we start? I know for the lenses I've seen, mostly cosmetic. I see them, it's inside a liquid and inside a kind of case and all of that. How do you care for your contact lenses? First off, contact lenses, both cosmetics and otherwise, if I'll use the word cosmetics, okay. they are all medical devices. But they've been abused so much mm. that you can get it from the corner store. I and then that's why you have incidences of people who wait and lose sight from it. Let's note, they are medical devices. Now, when you buy the contact lenses, if you get from a professional, you are supposed to get it with a solution that has the right consistency to keep those contact lenses clean and disinfected. You should also have a proper casing for it and never underline capital word, never should you use tap water to wash your contact lenses. Never should you move contact lenses that was previously on the right eye today and you wake up tomorrow, you decide I want to wear it on my left eye. Oh. You will cross infect your eyes if you have picked an infection from one eye. There are certain nevers, but most people don't take time to do that. So for contact lenses, the solution is important that you use to clean it, never use water, Keep in the right casing. Those cases should not even be broken or cracked. And your contact lenses, there is a duration for contact lenses. There are daily contacts that are for daily wear. There are contacts that are for monthly wears. There are some that you can sleep a couple of hours with. But you must adhere to instruction. If they tell you a, a contact lens is for daily, you discard at the end of the day. It goes to the trash. Oh. You don't say, oh, I spent money on it. I'll wear it again tomorrow. Mm -mm. Oh, wow. So there are contacts that are daily wears, discard. Monthly wears, you extend for a month, discard. What is the maximum duration for you've ever come across for using a contact lens? I've had someone tell me I bought my contact lens two years ago. And I'm like, excuse me, you still Medically, wear Medically, what's the maximum that is allowed? Like I said, it depends on which product you're buying. There are contact okay. lenses, that it is written specifically on the pack. These are daily wear. You okay. wear in the morning, the morning. by night time, you trash. It's okay. gone. Then you've got the ones that are monthly wears. At the end of 30 days, you, you trash. Do we have yearly wear? No, we don't. Oh, we don't. Okay, so that's the question. Also. We do not have We don't have, wear. so at the most, monthly wears. Monthly wears. Whew. And then of the monthlies, they're the ones you can sleep with. They're the ones you must remove at the end of every day. Mm. Now, you mentioned something about eye infections, about uh, switching from the right to the left. So that means that your eyes, they are in the, as much as they are connected, they're individual entities. That means that there could be an infection on the right and it doesn't affect the left in such a way that when you switch the lenses, you get infected. Of course. I'm sure most of us have had experiences whereby you wake up today, you've got a red eye. Yeah. One eye One is red eye. and the other isn't. And you're wondering what's going what's on. Going you have on? the eyes red, you're dripping, and you're, something is going on. Mm. Now, as you mean, you wear contact lenses on that eye, which you even shouldn't if you have such a red eye. If you a normal contact lens where I don't wear contact lenses that day, pick up your spectacle. But let's assume for one moment you choose to wear on that day mm. and you've worn that contact lenses on your right eye. It must go back into the right cases. You see, the case for contact lenses, it's written right and left, R and L, and L. to help you remember. But people forget or choose not to 
adhere to instructions and you pick up this infection that was on the right eye because you have contact lenses there today and transfer it to the left eye. The microorganisms, yes, you've disinfected, but what if it's not properly disinfected? You move it to the left eye. The left you've cross infected that eye. Apart, oh, wonderful. So apart from uh, the, um, the eyeglasses and the contacts, are there any other wares that people use for their eyes? No, basically, it's contact lenses. And contact lenses and, and frame. And then in, in, is there any case where contacts are prescribed over or they are more, how do I put it now? Is, is, there, is there any situation where you are you, you advised maybe to use contacts over glasses? Um, in certain situations where people are very high myop, my high myopes, very short-sighted persons. Okay. They, their glass prescription could be going to like minus 15, minus 12. What those days we used to call Coke bottles. Okay. Their glasses are so thick that even on frames, it's not looking very good. So for aesthetic purposes, you could tell the okay. person, use contact lenses because it's thinner, it's in the eye, it does the same purpose. As or against it, wearing something really heavy and unsightly. Well, generally, I just feel like the contact lenses are, they are not as safe as using this They're one. actually very safe. They very are. Very comfortable. And there's been evolution in contact lenses that you even have contact lenses that does the bifocal, multifocal thing. You can okay. use for distance, you can use for near vision. As against when initially it started, it was strictly for single vision to see far away. But we've evolved. And then Science when you, so you're putting it in yourself, your hands, how do you, do, do you clean? Let, let's you talk about that one. You wash. There are certain rules and regulations when let's it comes to that. wearing Wearing contact the contact lens. Let's yes. talk about that. First off, you must have your hands properly washed at all times and dry it before you wear your contact lenses. Properly washed. You must clean the contact lenses. For women, you must have your contact lenses in before you apply your eye makeup. You know, we use the kajal, the mascara, and all of that. <sighs> okay. And before you remove, you have to remove all those eye makeup before you remove First, the contact lenses. before you put in the contact lenses. Yes, all of that, they're important. And then I tell people, when your contact lens is old, we can't stress that enough, please change it. Because you could end up having issues with the cornea from your contact lenses. It could cause a cut in your eye. It could cause blood vessel to grow on the cornea where you don't want it to grow because you're using something not properly healthy and hygienic at that point in time. Mm. So yes, so keep, wash your hands your clean. Hands. keep your hands clean. The container you use, the pack for your contact lenses should be disinfected as often as possible. Two, three times a week, clean it up. Is there any way, because I, I've seen people wear it to just pick it up, <laughs> is there any way that is prescribed no, how to put isn't. it in? Basically, for new, new starters, we ask them to sit in front of a mirror. Okay. Because we time, like everything, practice makes perfect. Perfect. But sit in front of a mirror, look into the mirror and then try to maneuver to put it on. There are contact lens wearers too, some little things that we use to help pick up and wear. Yes, there are things we also use, but it's very comfortable in the way you are No, acting. like, it's, I feel like the eye, when I think of the, the senses in the body, the eye, I feel it's too sensitive. It is very sensitive. Like, I, I don't, don't bring anything near your eyes. Like, when, I, when I, I cringe and I see that, I mean, I love the eyes to look purple, uh, you know, when people use it, like I said, for cosmetic and aesthetic purposes, but man, don't joke with your eyes. I've had, I've, I've experienced, I've seen people who have experienced bad, um, there have been you know, bad stories, terrible source very stories. Bad stories. And so I don't think I would err on the side of caution. The risk is just too much. Please, except it is, um, you know, diagnosed. Yeah. I, no, um, don't shower with it. Don't swim with it. Don't go to the hot tub with it. It is important. Hot do, tubs. It could, it could, don't shower. Don't swim. Don't go to the hot tub with contact lenses. Water shouldn't get into the contact lenses. Thank you so much, Dr. Kenneth. It's a pleasure to be here. Having you here, my fear for contact has increased. No, it, <laughs> it should increased. really. <laughs> Thank you, it was a pleasure. Thank you. All right, so that's it. That's here. it. I hope you've heard this one. I'll have this video, of course, on YouTube, and uh, you'll get to see and listen to those instructions which she judiciously gave us on how to use your contact lenses and, of course, also your optical, you know, your full rim glasses. That's it on Health for now. We'll take a time out now. Stay with us. There's still more to come. Welcome back. Now, there are quite a few conversations in the parenting space not a lot of parents want to get into. And one is on raising digital citizens, responsible digital citizens. On Parenting Today, we have Babatunde Kayode. He is a parenting expert, and he's also a teen guide, and he's had quite a few conversations like this. And he's joining us to talk about exactly this topic, responsible digital citizens. Welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> it's good to be here. 
All right, so um, maybe we should explain what a responsible digital citizen actually is okay. and why we should be raising them. <laughs> okay, responsible digital citizens. Uh, like I always say that the children we have now are digital natives. They okay. were born where technology is advancing, now that we have AI and the rest of that. Hmm. And a lot of things are happening on the social media space, internet space, even digital space, if I, to put all of them together. Now, being responsible is knowing what to do and what not to do, the pros and the cons of, you know, getting that part in the digital space, either online or offline, with your device, whether you're out there mm. or indoors. Okay, so now I want to come from this angle. There are probably a few parents out there that who, who are still in denial of the fact that they are raising children in a particular age where exposure to digital devices is basically essential. Uh, and something they cannot avoid anymore. What do you, how do you respond to parents you come across who think this way? Okay, you can't solve a problem by running away from it. That's number one. Okay. And number two, like I always say that you should understand the times. Now, you said it is very essential for them to have it. Mm. Now, if you say because you're scared or maybe because of the stories you're online and then you won't prevent them from having access to these things, mm you would only kill their level of development. Okay. But instead, what you need to do is to pay attention and help them figure out a better way to handle these devices. Okay. And that means you getting involved and being getting intentional about it. So it's not just about withdrawing, it's about providing it, but with a guide. Okay. There should be certain parameters that have to be set, okay. you know, as far as using those devices are concerned. Okay, so let's talk age group now. On parenting here, we focus on everything from infancy to probably teenage years. Um, how soon is too soon to hand a digital device to hmm. a child? How soon is too soon? Hmm. Okay, my first son is four. Okay. And, you know, he's learning stop motion animation. Slow I'm motion animation? Stop motion animation. Stop motion yes. animation. I'm and teaching he's him. four? Yes. Wow. And I'm teaching him that. Okay. And I see that he just loves to handle this device. Okay. So, uh, okay, from his age, let me begin to teach certain skills. But he knows when to touch my... He doesn't have a phone. Okay. He doesn't have a device. Okay. I use mine to do the teaching. He knows when to touch it mm. and when not to touch it. Okay. But even before you get to the age of handing these devices to them, you need to start teaching them how to be responsible first. Okay. And then, of course... A lot of parents would, like, like I was saying, um, some would say until their child gets to 16, some would say until their child gets to 20. But you should know that when you delay that much, you're going to reduce the level of development. Um, the IQ also is going to develop. Mm. So I would feel, that even from the age of three, yes. it's not a problem. There are so many things they could do online. Mm. All right? you, don't, you don't have to be scared. There are so many things you can introduce to them online. Mm. Of course, we have, um, what's this, um, Coco Melon. Okay. At some okay. point, of course, it's a device. If you give it to a little child because you want to make the child to stop crying, mm. you're introducing the child already mm. to the digital world. Okay. And the child gets it and then stops crying because Coco Melon is played. Mm. So then what stops you from, you know, handing the same device to someone that is four or five? So I want to talk a, a bit about our cultural t context and our environment. So we are in Africa, um, and it's become evident because of, you know, some research that we've done over time, that children of, from age three, four years old, like your son, in other countries, in Asia, in America, in Europe, Europe. are all being exposed to these digital devices already. It's all around so, them. So, meaning that our kids are being held back basically by parents who don't understand how to introduce it. So now let's talk parameters. What are the parameters that you believe parents should put in place when making that introduction? Okay, now this is what you should put in place. Number one, there's, there needs to be ground rules. Okay. All right, you said screen time. Mm. You know, like I was saying you can use Google Family Link okay. to know exactly what you're doing. And then even on the device you're putting in your hands, you can set certain limitations. Okay. There are certain applications they can have. There are certain applications they can't have. Okay. Okay. If you use Google Family Link, you can reduce that. Mm. Now, 
for a little child, let's say three, four, or even six, ten, mm. you could just limit the major social media app to WhatsApp. Okay. And then reduce the number of um, um, the number of numbers that you have there, basically for communication. These devices are very good communication to imagine when you're not with your child you're not with your children and then they need to communicate to you they need to tell you something or something is wrong with them and you're not there mm. do they have to wait for you to get back home mm. could you start now we have youtube kids mm. not the main youtube youtube kids yeah. where they could go there and learn mm. there are so many things you could learn if you notice that your child likes to draw your child likes to sing your child likes to cook there are so many things you could learn there without having access to those um, sites that you're concerned, sites. Yes, you're concerned about. So you could actually use that family link to block those sites. You know what? I wish we had much more time to talk about this, but I feel like uh, people at home have questions and we'll do what we can to answer those questions online for you. Use our hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC and ask your questions. We have Babatunde Kayode, a parenting expert here. He'll be back again next week to discuss some more. I have to say thank you to you for joining us. Right, thank you very much. It's good to be here. All right, let's raise some responsible digital citizens. But that's the key word, raise them. All right, we'll be raising the bar after this break. Stay with us. It's time for us to show you what we are having for breakfast this morning. <laughs> and it will be prepared by <laughs> Chef Shivoti. Well, good to have you in the studio yeah, with us. Morning. All right, so today we are making something really interesting, something so many people can identify with. But in a different manner, the chef Shibio Timo um, style. So let's uh, talk about the ingredients. But first, what are we making for breakfast? Yam pottage. Yam pottage. So let, let's see what we'll be making use of. Oh, uh, yam. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. Our spice salt. Sorry, my voice is cracking. Yeah, it's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll be all right. <laughs> the vegetable. What, what vegetable is that? Ugu. Precisely. Ugu. Okay. Protein. Okay. Meat. Momo, crayfish, our titles, onions, and our pepper, and water. Okay, so this titles has been boiled. Yes. Yes, and I noticed you were also trying to debone it as well, so exactly. as to, so, to use the yes. fish itself, then of course the onions and water. Exactly. Uh, but then I, I observed something. I do not see um, potato, for example. Yes, potato is now, you know, we have season for everything. No, we are not in season. Even yam, we are not in season. Because I just said food. Because mm -hmm. sometimes yeah, when people potato. are doing yam potato, they call it yam potato, but there's, all, there's always meat. potato yes, it's always to sweeten it. Exactly. And then besides ugu, what other vegetable can one use for potato? You can use any other thing that you're comfortable with. So I've actually eaten potato that had scent leaf inside. Yes, it's very and It was amazing. It was spicy, yeah, yeah, yeah. tasty. I yes. can't describe it. So that's palm oil, by the yes. way. So, so we bleached the oil. Yeah. yeah. This is palm oil and granite oil. Oh, a mixture of palm oil and uh, granite oil. Yeah. Okay, so that's what we have in there. Palm oil and granite oil. Why are you mixing both? Just for us. Okay, so that gives a unique taste according to Chef Shibot. <laughs> so so. Let's, let's run through the process. So after this is fried for about, say, a minute, right? Yes. Yeah, what goes in? Pepper. The pepper. Okay. Crayfish, because the fresh crayfish. Okay. Then our titles will be sprinkled inside. Okay. Then the pomo. Okay. After the pomo goes inside, yeah. the pepper, like I said, pepper goes in. Yeah. After that, we allow it to cook for a minute. Then we now put our yam. But the yam is going to take a while to cook. Oh, yes, yeah. we are putting the fish and the crayfish yes. inside, so, even the, um, the cow skin and the beef. Yes. Don't you think it will get I'm not lost putting, in I'm, I'm not putting this inside it. Okay, until it's ready. Until it's ready. But don't you think all of this will be lost in it? It will not. That's why we have it. So, as you are biting, every bit you are biting, you are taking this. Ah, okay. I would have thought that the yam will be boiled first, then we put this towards mm. the end. But th this is this is going to be very interesting. Don't worry. Our guest will definitely let you know exactly what it tastes like at the end of the show. Right now, however, we have to take a break because we've reached the top of the first star. We are 45 minutes on the other side. Stay with us, it's Wake Up Nigeria. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. Made even more beautiful by oh. the aroma emanating from uh -oh. the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the masterpiece that is brewing in the kitchenette. And all wow. That, uh, uh -uh. The oh, yeah, chef baby. 
<laughs> she's focused uh, on like Mary who is distracting her. Well, me, I'm form, the one distracting her. Trying to form like she's I don't busy understand. or she's working. When, when, when we start the show, you're supposed to first welcome people back to the second hour is food, Mike. <laughs> ah, I, found I welcome them. I food. welcome them. Welcome, of mm, course. Yeah. Like Tita already said, of course, uh, we know the first half has been quite um, educational for mm. you. We've done parenting. We've also had health. Yeah. And of course, uh, we've had a first taste of what happened in the kitchen. Well, the next 45 minutes is guaranteed to ease you more into the day's activity. My name is Titi Lyle Oyinso. I'm Mike Messi Kenner. The show is live, of course, on Go TV Channel 16. And then on the ultra high frequency, it's Terrestrial Band 49. Yeah. On social media, we are at TVC Connect. You can also watch past episodes on YouTube at TVC entertainment the comments contributions are golden we love it when we use the hashtag wake up nigeria on tvc all right so we'll uh, kick off a second lap with uh, a soul lifting musical performance uh, john peters a music minister and evangelist and uh, this is titled abasi amana god has done me well something i wanted to talk about um uh, it was a response it's about clapbacks on social media and the need to be savage. I find that very, very... Childish. It, it, not ch Yeah, yes, really? that is one way to go. Also. I, 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 so even mm. the few times when I had to clap back, I, f I felt depleted, like I felt empty, oh. like, okay, to what end? Yeah. And that's because I saw, um, I know, I know with the Sudan situation, on, we're trying to evacuate Nigerians. Mm -hmm. I think it was uh, the boss of Nikom who was clapping back. I feel like she's far above those kind of things. That's okay, David. Yes, trying to clap back at every, every somebody, probably who's a troll who has zero followers and then you are like I feel like hey it might be a handler no need man why are you there eh? it might be a handler it, it might be a yes, oh, oh yes a but that's the, so my, the handler yeah, is then, like okay you know, my point is that the handler yeah, but then should, that at that's that particular situation especially because I have come to realize that a lot I know Twitter seems like an intellectual space but I've also come to realize that it's a space where a lot of ignorant people thrive. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, a lot of people are on that space. They yeah. know nothing about. Mm. They just sit anything. down somewhere. They see somebody's tweet. Ah, okay. I think that's how it might be. Let me tweet on it. They have <laughs> no idea. Yeah. So it is your job as a handler for a reputable organization True. and as big or a person. as. Um, um, the NITCOM, which As of course you have played a major person, role yes. in this regard to educate. Mm. Don't be, be clapping fellow. back. Don't <laughs> follow to say, ah, no, we'll give it back to you. No, you educate. educate you, that way you are not only educating that person, you are also educating a lot more other people who yeah. are ignorant of the situation. Mm. So in the end, clapbacks are a waste of a tweet. Mm. That's what I think. data. The they are a waste of a tweet. Um, but in the end, there's a lot of information regarding diplomacy that people do masters for. There's issues of international relations that people do have degrees for, have doctorates for, mm. um, that has been put into consideration before certain decisions are made, before certain things are acted upon. Mm. There's so many factors that we probably couldn't even fathom are going on right now. Especially with this Sudan matter situation, yeah, and that so, won't come so, out on Twitter. On, so I've always it won't like, come out. No, but I've that always, is your I, job because yeah. every social media. That is why you are on social media as an organization. Nobody asks you to be on Twitter mm. or any social media. The fact that you are there should be an opportunity for you to educate folks who have no idea about what your organization even stands for or what they some do. of these people do threads to explain. Mm. They will go into details. Mm. Then some very intelligent people <laughs> will now decide to bring a quote from one person that woke up and saw that thing in their dream mm. and decided this must be the reality and then quote it okay. without verifying. Mm. The issue is lack of verification. So you come at the person and the reality is, I've, I, I used to think it was a Nigerian thing, this clapback thing, but even some other people all yeah. over the world, yeah, yeah, some yeah. important officials, of I don't know whether it's them or their handlers, mm. the clap back is now international. Mm. Because you, you you might just be in your space at that point and you're looking at the message and like, ah, I just did a freaking thread about this yeah. yesterday. And, and then you're just not having it. Probably so you, know, you know what happens? On because Thursday, I wanted something else, but on Thursday, we'll just focus on Twitter because mm. it's going to get worse. And the reason why it will get worse is, uh, I would objectively look at Elon Musk's 
handling of Twitter because Twitter has now become like a plaything, mm. and there's a lot now. It's a market. Verified, um, <laughs> you know, the blue, the, blue the, ticks, the, the Twitter, yeah. uh, Twitter yeah. blue, mm -hmm. which he wanted, he has commercialized to mm. yeah. make money for the company. Is causing a whole lot of issues mm. now. People who were verified, legacy, they call verified. it legacy verifications. Mm. That means that uh, bodies, um, uh, celebrities, and all of yeah. that. Their, their ticks were taken off. Mm. He said he would pay for only three, including LeBron James. And wow. then now, you, you, so yeah. I on your handle now, you are MM, mm. where you can you can be LeBron James mm. at your AVI. So like yeah. you know the title of your handle, which is not your art, mm. which is just a title, mm. and then you verify it. Mm. So someone can just see that thing and think it. And think, think it is. So we've already had many people who use celebrity names and they are verified because they paid for Twitter Blue, mm. oh. causing a lot of issues. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody can stand up and say at TVC Connect. Hmm. At TVC Connect is there, but then the, the title of the handle, which precedes the and when you put it, they put TVC Connect and the person's name is uh, Oak Creek Bottle. And so what they've done is they have, so, you know there's a yellow tick now. Even at that one now. So the no, yellow see, tick is, is not, it can't be gotten by just so anybody. The point it has now to be an organization. So now the point is that, that even that yellow tick Yes, now, but it's, there's a yellow tick. So now even that yellow tick now, they started taking it off. Hmm. They started taking it off because they want people to get the blue ones. He has been, it's been back and forth. They started taking it off. They won't put the, get the blue ones. Uh, anyway, like Mike said, a lot of celebrities, a lot of celebrities don't even have the yellow ones. On, on they had only the blue ones. The and yellow ones, the, the golden Twitter ones came and all of that. Yeah. And exactly. uh, there are several other platforms. Um, I know the the guy who sold Twitter has gotten um, another, has gotten one. another one. Mm. So well, if Android you feel you like, yeah, if mm. you if you feel you like it and you're an Android user, mm -hmm. you can move. The thing is, when it comes to platforms that I have no shares in, I'm not a big shareholder in. It's a business I try to. I know you, I know you bought shares. I have shares in Twitter. Yes, my, but my issue, uh, that my issue, I always feel like... My share price has been dipping. We'll do, we'll do it on it's Thursday. It's affecting you know what me happens. too. We'll do yeah. it on Thursday. Yeah. We'll get as much information it's, as we can. Yeah. And then we'll do it on Thursday, right? We'll mm. talk about Twitter and Elon yeah. Musk. Mm. All right. Hello and good morning. It's time for a news update right here on Wake Up Nigeria. My name is Titi Laya Oinison. Thanks for joining us. We begin from the nation's capital, where Nigeria's president-elect, Bola Tinubu, returned to the country after over four weeks in Europe. His aircraft touched down at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport around 4.30 p.m. yesterday. The president-elect, who traveled out of the country since March 21st, returned to give direction ahead of May 29th inauguration. The former Lagos governor returned with his wife, Senator Oluremi Tinubu, and they were received by the vice president-elect, Kashim Shetima, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabiamila, and other high-ranking party chieftains. The trip, according to the office of the president-elect, was to enable him rest and plan for transition programmed ahead of his inauguration as the 16th president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Earlier, before the arrival of the president-elect, our correspondent spoke to some APC members on what Nigerians should expect after May 29th inauguration. We give him a welcome uh, support because for him to accept to contest as a president is a welcome development in our party, APC. Winning is another thing, a step forward 10 times, 100 times that this is a person we want in this country who can change so many things in this country. The man who is going to rebuild our hope, and our hope is on him. We are hoping that by the time he is on 29th of May, things, a lot of the things are going to change. Youth will be happy, the old will be happy, and even the dead will be happy. This is the man we will be working for. That's why we are here, to give you a welcome support, to say this is the man we wanted in this country. He's the man we've been working for, and that's why we are here. And for the party, it's um, a new dawn. It's a new dawn for the party. It's a new dawn for Nigeria. And also, if you remember, this is the era for renewed hope. Now, he's a man, a president who has an action plan, a president who is actually right, a president-elect who will be sworn in, inshallah, on the 29th of May 2023 as the executive president, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And what we're saying is we have a man who's been prepared for over 30 years, we have a man who has a plan to take action, and we have a man who's ready to actually hit the ground running from day one. And we're quite glad. You can see the number of people here today. This is just probably a very small um, number of people compared to those who are waiting for him at the Unity Fountain and also all over Nigeria. Nigerians, and let's also remember that Nigerians actually gave him that mandate freely in a credible, 
and also an election that was actually free. And Nigerians just can't win. Meanwhile, the president-elect Bola Tinubu has charged supporters who thronged his Asukuru residence to welcome him after his return to be calm and peaceful. Ashua Jutinubu urged them to go back home and enable him rest as he has a long day beginning today. Also, present at his Abuja resident was the former governor of Borno State, Ali Modu Sharif, who spoke about the expectations of Nigerians for the incoming administration. Serving senators and some party chieftains were also present to welcome the president-elect. Just an event. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, people are already talking about your administration and what it will look like. Can you give us a glimpse into what you have in plan? I can't. I've not consulted people yet. And I mean, I mean, administration. You said is not run alone. Mm -hmm. You don't govern alone. Mm. You govern with people. You consult. Assemble and then hit the ground running. And it's the same country, right? Isn't it? Thank uh, you. So, thank you very much. The middle yeah, okay. So, what is important is that when you have a head that is correct, everybody. And that's all we have time for when it comes to the news on Wake Up Nigeria 4 this morning. We'll be back with more after this. Uh, Chef Shivotimo is currently mashing our yams so that we can get that pottage fill. Hmm? Remember what we're having today is uh, yam pottage and a lot has gone into the pot. Yes, it's a one pot dish. Uh, I think I'm going to let uh, Chef Shivotimo tell us how we managed to uh, achieve this. So run us through the process again. Boiled pepper. Okay. And our oil went in first. After our oil, then we put we our... heated the oil? Yes. Onions. Uh, by the way, palm oil and vegetable oil. Vegetable oil. Were used. So, we now put our onions, yeah. our pepper. Yeah. Then, after adding those things, yeah. our ingredients, the fish, the crayfish, and the yam. Now, we now allow it to boil. So, you debone your fish, okay? Yes, I so, do. We, we did that before uh, putting it in. So, yes, yeah, so she's currently mashing it. Uh, so, you could get this. Some people use, um, you, you could actually use this. Tommy stick. Can you see it? Or, you, can you, use you could, yes, yeah, some people use this as well. Mm -hmm. And then some people use the other. Um, you know, we have some one. people that don't like their yam to be smooth. They want to see the whole yam. Okay. That's why I use this. But in the case that we have people that want it to be blended to. Yeah, not like not, pudding, more yes. like uh, so. But I, I've always thought, what is yam pottage without yam chunks? I don't know if you agree with me. I know we all have uh, different ways of enjoying food, but what is yam pottage without those yam chunks? You know, when you are eating your pottage and you are chewing the yam as well, no, so don't taking want it. the soup or the sauce as the case may be, but the yam has to be soft so you don't have to chew too much. Ah. I'm fantasizing. You love food. Ah, sis, I do. <laughs> yeah, foodie. We are not as foodie as... No, I know, no. When I, when, I used to kneel down and greet Mike and Evan when it comes to being a foodie. <laughs> but, so, we're going to continue doing this till the yam is completely mashed or we're going to leave some chunks. Maybe for you, for Please, people like you. His goodness. So, after then, we are putting our like, vegetable. Ah, don't finish, you. Oh. We are putting our vegetable. Okay. But the yam is soft enough, so that's why we're able to uh, yes. mash it. So, uh, plus or minus 20 minutes, you have your yam soft already. The entire yes. process takes but about you know, 30 you know, to you know, this yam minutes. Is old yam, so it takes a lot of time. But if it is a new yam, why? It cooks faster. Faster. Okay, so old yam, being that it's dry, it takes a longer time. So, is it after putting in the vegetable, we'll now put in the... Yes, to warm it up, but it's, it's a fried it's meat. cooked and um, yes. perfect. Especially. Yes. Okay, so we'll uh, finish up the process here. 
and uh, have our food ready in time to serve our guests. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking well, about Jamie Foxx, yeah? yeah. And I, uh, there's a song that keeps playing yeah, in my yeah, head. Yeah, it's playing in my head. It's, but it's, I can't it's, it's, it's not bad for sure. I don't yeah. know. Do you know that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. had one too many drinks. And yeah. We can't talk about I alcohol, but hey, welcome to the kitchen. <laughs> it was Kathy. really nice. Welcome to the yes. kitchen. So Thank breakfast you. is by Chef uh, Shebo Timo, mm. and she made yam pottage. Yeah. Yeah. So please dig in. Give us your feedback. What do you make of it? <sighs> so is everybody gonna act like we don't have two Bashwa Alimi on set? <laughs> right. Are you kidding? <laughs> right. Don't yeah. This is my sister. Are mm. so lovely, and we love having uh -oh. them together on set today. Please, what do you think? Please tell us how the food tastes first. Mm. Mm -hmm. You like it? Yeah, I like it. Uh -uh. I like Why it. I like it. Well, I like spicy. Ah. And it's not spicy enough for me. I like my food hot. Like, spicy. <laughs> but it's still nice. It tastes really nice. So it, she's famed for spicy. Yeah. Hold on. And the reason she didn't do spicy today is because people have been saying, your food is very spicy, spicy. 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 Right. Today that she did not now do spicy. It's the one. Then the spice queen is here. <laughs> Hold on. But Hold it's well done. Really nice. Hold, Hold on. Yeah. Well I have done. a message from my director. Mm. My director is Olamide Oshofa. He said we blow you now. He don't say it like that. No, he should blow me with some pounds and dollars. Oh, okay. Like, I, I'm here from the We'll party. see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.